G'day everyone, Jamie Chapman here for another episode of 3 Minute Histology. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the histological structure and overview of the structure of the ovary, which of course is the female gonad. Now, the gonads are responsible for the production of the sex hormones, uh, predominantly estrogen and progesterones, and also the gametes, which in the female, of course, is the oocyte. Um, we'll talk more about the follicle structure in a different video, uh, but today we're just going to do an overview of the histological features of the ovary. So let's start our three minutes. So the ovary, uh, of course, exists within the pelvis in the female. Um, it's often described as being almond-sized, uh, um, and it has a uh, outer cortex within which we find the follicles at various stages of development. So you can see all of these follicles, and we'll have a, a separate video looking at fo follicle structure uh, a bit later. And then also an inner medullary region. Now, the medulla is probably the most least interesting region of the ovary but of course probably most functionally important because of course this is where the ovarian artery uh, and veins run and so the blood supply exists within this tissue here the artery is often described as being helicine so you can see a little arteriole here helicine just means helix shaped or spiral shaped um, it's made up of denser regular connective tissue and often the medulla is continuous with the ovarian ligament which is the ligament which attaches the ovary to to the lateral sides of the uterus. So the outer cortex uh, here is where we find the follicles. If we look at the surface here, and I don't think it's preserved particularly well, but if we sort of zoom in here, you should be able to see a simple cuboidal epithelium on the surface here. This is known as the ovarian surface epithelium, or sometimes referred to as the germinal epithelium. Now, it was originally described as germinal epithelium because the first histologist kind of postulated that the follicles originated from these cells here. And then later on, as we understood um, the uh, origin of the germ cells, you know, originating from primordial germ cells from the yolk sac during embryonic development, we knew that this is simply a mesothelium, uh, which has come from the uh, abdominal cavity where the gonads take their origin and then they migrate down uh, to the pelvis for the females. So it's just then referred to as a simple uh, surface ovarian epithelium, which is a simple uh, cuboidal epithelium. Now there would be a basement membrane sitting beneath there and then we've got a, a dense irregular connective tissue layer here which is referred to as the tunica albuginea. Now this is a term which you may have come up with against if you've looked at the histology of the testis. The testis has a tunica albuginea. It just means a white layer because uh, of its dense connective tissue. If we um, zoom out a little bit, we can see these follicles at various stages of development. Um, and then the tissue in between the follicles is referred to as stroma. So the cortex contains follicles, as I say, at various stages of development, and then stromal cells in between. And of course, there's capillaries and, and other uh, blood vessels supplying uh, these follicles here. So overall, that's basically the overview feature of the ovary. Um, I hope you found that useful and stay tuned for other videos where we look at more fine detail about follicular structure and so on. Hooroo!